Hey, welcome to the Thriving Minds Podcast with your host, Walter Parada, where we strive to provide you with empowering talks so you can live to thrive. And today, we will be talking about exploring yourself to find what works for you. If you find yourself unsure of what to do next or hesitant to move forward with whatever it is you're going through, like you're unsure of what is right for you, then exploring yourself to better understand what makes you tick and what drives you to do what you do is a great starting point. I think for the most part, we give too much of ourselves to external things with the goal of producing results. And this could be school, work, or just society in general. And because of this, we're taking that energy away from knowing more about ourselves. And I think this is an important piece before really committing to whatever you decide to do that's going to help you perform with purpose. So once you know why you do what you do, everything else just falls into place. It, it helps you just become more comfortable in whatever comes your way. It's, it's just a gratifying state knowing where you stand and sticking to it. And because of this, you actually strengthen the belief within yourself that is not dependent on external factors. And as you go about the process of exploring yourself, you need to find what works best for you. While advice from others can be helpful, they also can be a distraction and sometimes they can be overrated. You know, it can be very gripping to listen to somebody who's reached a high point in their life through whatever successes that they've had. And, and to think that same formula will work for you, uh, while it may, it also may not, but you're going to have to be the one that determines that, uh, whether it's a good fit for you or not. So you have to be able to, you know, find a pair of shoes that fit you so you can be yourself that allows you to run and jump higher in life. And maybe, you know, that pair does not yet exist. So you're going to have to create your own uh, to find that right fit. You know, so if you take Michael Jordan, for example, you know, the shoes he used within the, in, in the NBA are not going to fit a lot of people. So while his success shows his formula work for him, we all have to find uh, what formula works best for each and every one of us. And even when you find what works for you, that same formula may not be uh, applicable in the future. So it might be what was best at the time, but it can eventually become obsolete, you know, because things change over time, right? And if you think about the newspaper industry, there was a time where a physical copy of the news was a thriving industry. But as more people got access to the internet, a uh, physical, uh, physical copy was not as effective in delivering information. So most of the news is now de delivered digitally. So you should constantly be trying new things, tweaking, uh, you know, making adjustment to find what works best for you. And you want to avoid becoming too attached what's, with what has worked before. So you, you want to avoid being stuck in, in how things work uh, because when you do, you eventually fall into how things used to work. And when you don't get the results that you're expecting or, or things to play out as you envision, eventually you become frustrated with, uh, with yourself and, and even the process. So look at the small things that you can make incremental improvements to, uh, or maybe not even, uh, improvements, but just little adjustments that can make a big difference into continuously uh, being innovative. So as you try these new things, you're eventually going to start developing an appetite for learning that's going to really allow you to become more adaptive, uh, that makes you proactive, you're more in the driver's seat, instead of reacting, uh, you know, being the passenger of uh, the vehicle of life, right? It keeps you actually a step ahead uh, that gives you uh, the opportunity 
to to thrive. And as you're exploring yourself uh, to find what works for you, there's going to be times where you're going to be on an island by yourself. You're going to be alone and you got to understand that's okay. You don't need to have the approval of others to tell you you're doing the right thing because they don't see things from your perspective. Uh, you're the one that has to live with yourself on a daily basis and not these other people with their opinions and their know-abouts and their recommendations. So you got to become accustomed to being on that island where you're by yourself and you're going to have to spend time alone with yourself, with your thoughts and just cut out the distractions to allow yourself to to reflect on on all your experiences, uh, both good and bad, and, and every, everything in between. And giving yourself the time to do this allows you to work through things that too many times we get interrupted throughout the, the chaos that can be in your daily life. You know, I'm sure uh, you've had moments, I, I know I've had uh, moments where I had a just a great chain of thoughts only for it to be interrupted by, you know, a small distraction enough to throw me off. And then I end up asking myself, hey, uh, what was that that thought I had? What was I thinking? And and then, you know, eventually uh, it gnaws at me a little bit, you know, because I can't recall that same sequence of of thinking that I had. And there goes my flow state, right? If you actually look around, some of the simple things such as, you know, a ding you hear from your phone of a certain message or the TV playing in the background that captures your attention or it could be uh, music that you have on that changes your rhythm and eventually, you know, your thoughts. So having that quiet, alone Distraction limited time allows you uh, to really get into the flow of all that deep thinking. But once you can actually give yourself the opportunity to be alone, at times it's going to hurt to relive some of the more painful, unpleasant experiences. But you got to allow yourself to process that information because as you do, the pain that's that causes that stinging feeling uh stings a little less and a little less and a little less and then there's going to be important things that you pick up about yourself as you allow yourself to to reflect on these experiences that you might not have otherwise because of the constant suppressing of these memories so if you think about many successful artists and musicians some of their best work has come from the pain that they had felt and processed. So if you recall, you know, the song uh, Under the Bridge by the the band Red Hot Chili Peppers actually was not meant to be a song, but was written as a poem until uh, the music producer that they were working with said, hey, uh, let me look at all your, your stuff you're, you're working on, right? So he he saw that poem and, and he actually encouraged him, hey, uh, this is really good content. You should really turn this into a song. Well, the, at first the pushback was uh, it was too embarrassing. It was too much to share. But this song actually resonated with a lot of people. And because of this, someone else's pain became relatable to millions of other people. And it gives them time to process what they've been through. We just have to remember that these painful experiences can serve you. And and sharing it with others is probably going to uh, serve them as well too, right? It, it helps to actually let down your guard of knowing you don't have to put on a front of appearing strong to others. But allowing yourself to be vulnerable so you can be more accepting of yourself and this can give you you know greater comfort in your faults and weaknesses uh, to overcome some things that you might be insecure about in the process of 
exploring yourself. It's going to be important. It's actually been really important to know what you like and what you don't like on a definitive basis. Not the in-between like, uh, oh, I kind of like it or, uh, I don't really like it, but it's okay. You know, so the things that you like is going to help you sift through the things that that you want to pursue that's going to give you more time to do whatever it is you want. So it could be, you know, you like cars and uh, uh, you want to work with them somehow, right? Repairing them, driving them, testing them, racing them, wh whatever it is, you know, just go ahead, pursue it. And knowing what you like is a little bit more obvious as there's a tendency uh, to make you excited of, of what you're doing or what you're about to do. And recognizing these things are something you should pursue and work to foster that excitement. You got to you gotta build that want of continuing to do it. As you find what you, what you really like, it's going to be really helpful to clearly define the things that you like, which is going to help you define what it is exactly you want. So the detailed things are going to help you focus on uh, what makes a difference of why you like it. So you might like nature because it gives you peace and recognizing the specifics as why it gives you peace, such as the abundance of trees, the sounds that the birds make, uh, the different array of colors or how the wind blows that gives you an uplifting feeling. So knowing these details are going to give you important information as to why you like anything. But knowing what you don't like is actually just as important as what you do like because it clearly tells you what you're not going to tolerate. So by knowing definitively I don't like sitting at a desk all day gives you the indication of the things that you should avoid. And recognizing what you don't like is just going to help you move on from it. It's just going to save you time from mulling it over and, and just sticking to it. You know, so the dangers of not knowing what you don't like is that you slowly give into it and you build up a tolerance of eventually what it is you don't want. So this can be especially frustrating when it comes to to a, a job, right? Not realizing you may not like it, but you do it because it's a steady source of income. So it is not something you hate. So there might be a tendency to stick with it. The, th the thoughts of, hey, it's not so bad here. I have a good, where else am I going to find this type of pay that keeps me content, right? May not be happy, but content. Hey, you know, not bad. But then a few years go by and maybe a decade or two. And then eventually you feel like, hey, I'm in too deep. Might as well stick with it until I retire. But this can actually be really scary if you decide that you want to leave, even when you find something you really want to pursue. I actually find this very worrisome because it's almost like a, a silent killer kind of compromising who you are and what more you can become because you haven't realized what you don't like. I can remember I, I got the opportunity to work with this one international student. Uh, man, she was really bright and she was pursuing a PhD in turf grass sciences. And I remember one time we're working in the greenhouse and we're, you know, uh, there was another student there and we're talking about what we're going to do, you know, once we graduate, you know, when it came time for her to speak, she says, turf grass is not something she wanted to go into. It's just something where she came from that the schools picked for you based on your test scores. And I, I just remember what struck me was uh, she felt like she was locked in that she had to do that. But she says, you know, once I have kids, I'm going to tell them, just follow your heart. And I just remember thinking, wow, it's kind of a little heartbreaking, you know. I'm not sure uh, what she ended up doing, but that 
that was pretty not depressing but if it made me feel a bit down so pay attention to the things that you tend to tolerate and ask yourself if you really like it if you don't then this might be an indication that you should probably move on from it so knowing the specifics of why you don't like something also needs to apply in this same scenario so simply saying I don't like it is not going to give you much information as if it was specific so you understand what to avoid exactly. So say you got bitten by a dog and the general conclusion is you don't like dogs because because of that one incident. But if you can be specific as to not liking dogs that are aggressive is going to help you not put all dogs into that that one category. And knowing these details will give you important information as to why you do or don't like whatever it is that that you've uh, got to experience. So another thing to find what works for you, you know, when you explore yourself is you al- allow yourself to be creative and not control when creativity comes about. For example, saying, well, I'm going to have today. Uh, for an hour, I'm going to be creative, you know, so by just allowing it to flow, it allows you to be yourself and to be more connected with what is possible. So sometimes we can be so consumed by what we see physically that it suppresses our creative side and only operate in a small circle of what we know. And what your creative side gives you is a world of wonder of asking because it piques your curiosity that gives life to your ideas. So let things happen naturally. And when great ideas come about, just, you know, immediately take some sort of action towards it. It can be something as simple as just writing down the idea or yelling it out with conviction, right? Like, uh, uh, I'm going to be financially free by the time I'm 38 or something, right? whatever it is but this is actually going to help you gain momentum towards possibly pursuing it and at the very least you have a better chance of remembering it uh, that that puts some action towards it and the more you're able to do this the more you allow your creativity to take over now some people are a bit more naturally creative and you should not be discouraged if it doesn't come so quickly but you have to give yourself time to allow your your creativity to grow. If you if you're having trouble, you know, getting your creative juices flowing, just start by firing off ideas out loud, as it's gonna just get you in a a nice flow state uh, that eventually uh, opens up the floodgates of your imagination uh, to just run wild. So just you know, whatever ideas you might it might seem crazy, but just you know blurted out there music is actually another uh, great way to unlock that creativity within you as it's gonna trigger feelings that naturally evoke some of your your great ideas so the key is to uh, feed that creative side that's going to help you uh, tap into those possibilities you know a, a great example is is uh, Mel Kuyper Jr. who actually covers the NFL draft where pro football team select draft eligible college players he actually made up his own career as a draft analyst back in 1979 I I think Um, and this all started from what he was interested of of, uh, following college players uh, into professional football and at that time there was not the coverage that there is now and I just find things like this so amazing that he he was willing to color outside the lines and this led him to this long illustrious career you know he he first started going off to college but as he's you know he started writing a few articles on certain college prospects and eventually started selling them to to the sports coverage networks and eventually just took off from there and even as he started out there was many people that told him you know just go get a real job but his focus on the possibilities allowed him to pursue that 
and make that into, you know, a, a very enjoyable career for him. Another practice that might work for you as you explore yourself is to uh, journal, uh, especially since we have thousands of thoughts that just race through our minds on a daily basis. And consistently journaling on a daily basis allows you to mentally unload whatever it is you're thinking about. And this actually allows you to reflect on them, whereas in your head, you know, they race so fast that these thoughts can elude you. Uh, so one moment you can feel, hey, uh, things are crumbling all around me. And then a little while later, you might, f you might forget about it and move on from it. And next thing, next thing you know, you know, it doesn't even give you the time to evaluate uh, what you were going through that eventually you start repeating these same patterns, right? High, low, high, low, high, low of, of, of feeling well, right? But journaling actually really gives you the ability to gain perspective at a later time. And you learn more about yourself as it makes you question, did I really write this or, or why did I write this? Eventually, with enough written material in your journal, you're going to start to notice patterns about yourself. And many times you're going to end up getting answers to many of your questions. And it's actually common to, to find yourself complaining in your journal at first, you know. But uh, once you start to notice if you are complaining, it can actually make you pause and almost become irritated with yourself in a way, you know, when you find this. But once you start to notice that you're complaining in your journal, you start to get to the point of overcoming that with stating it as a problem and then finding a solution for it and even writing down possible solutions. And then eventually this leads to more, more of you being proactive for the things that are going on in, in your life. I think this is just such a highly overlooked and it's just so undervalued. Uh, journaling is just such a great tool because it, it takes a little bit of effort to slow down your thinking, write out uh, what's on your mind, uh, what's the most important thing that's really going on. It really, in a way, acts like a mirror for what you're thinking or feeling. You know, there are mirrors to see yourself to notice, hey, uh, What's in my teeth or uh, do I have a booger on my nose? And a journal works the same way. You know, it gives an internal view of what's really going on. Journaling might seem a bit intimidating and uh, it, it, it shouldn't be. It's there to serve you. So it doesn't have to be something that is going to be in some well-published article. This is strictly for you uh, to see what's going on. And it can be about anything that is most significant to you. Or maybe it, it doesn't even have to be significant, but at least writing something down provides a little bit more understanding of, of who you are. You know, I can remember one of my more uh, simple entries was one where I, I had a, a great Saturday. And uh, I wrote down, I had pancakes. I enjoyed the whole day just relaxing lounging around and you know every now and then on some of my more down days I'll, I'll just reflect on that that one entry to remind me of man the simple things are great and I'm, I'm glad I, I captured that moment because it helps me get back to en enjoying the the little things another thing is to get outside your comfort zone is going to help you have new experiences that's going to make you more well-rounded it gives you different perspectives that you otherwise would not have known about if you remain in your comfort zone. So that perspective that you gain can change your thinking for the better. I actually got to be a part of a really proactive organization that provides young adults who take a gap year right after high school. Uh, they're called Pacific Discovery, and they actually learn more about themselves and the world around them uh, through all the different things that they see and experience and it helps them develop uh, different ways of thinking these these young adults were all from different parts of the u.s ranging from the northeast southeast midwest to the west coast so they all come to this one farm i was consulting for and you know they get hands-on experience with uh, production agriculture and understand 
or get to understand what's involved in producing a, a successful crop. And one thing that struck me about everyone was that they had a desire to get outside of what was familiar to them. You know, they got in there, they, they did manual labor, cutting and hauling branches from out in the nut orchard. And I think all of them had no desire to be in, far, in the farming industry, but their willingness to get in there and learn, to learn and work shows that they're just committed to improving themselves. I remember one of them had plans to be an orthopedic surgeon and already got accepted into his university of choice and was just taking the year off to develop himself. Uh, another uh, one of them was actually a singer and she was looking for experiences to help her gain new perspective and, and help her in her songwriting. And I just remember at the end of the experience, I was so impressed by these group of individuals that just took the time to delay their future work to help focus on exploring themselves and doing some, something completely new to them. And you can do the same and it can be something as simple as, you know, overnight camping or maybe even for a weekend, or it could be taking a class that you're not familiar with, you know, something like business or carpentry, but whatever it is, seek something outside of your line of vision. And as you explore yourself, you know, to find really what works for you, there's no specific time frame that tells you when you know more about yourself, but the more you're committed to finding what works for you, the more clarity you have that's going to allow you to really perform with purpose. I think too much times we've been conditioned to try to hurry up and figure out what we're going to do with the rest of our lives when we're in high school or right after high school. There's just such a pressure to hurry up and get to your destination when have we even asked uh, why is that my destination? You know, maybe what works for you is is the need to have multiple different things throughout your life. That you need to have completely different chapters in your life. Simply because you have a degree in a certain field doesn't mean you're regulated to remain there. Or because you don't have a certain degree, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. While there may be pressure from the outside telling you or recommending what you should do, does not mean you should do it only if you feel it's going to work for you. And sometimes finding that path can be long and difficult, but just stay committed to yourself and not conform to others. Remember, somebody else's success is not going to be the same as yours, as your definition is going to differ from theirs. Take the time to define the things in your life, what you value and what you're striving for. There is more than one right way to do things, and you should not let others dictate what that is. And if you're wrong, so what? See what you gain from it and move forward. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you're interested in more about exploring yourself, check out thrivingminds.live. All right, until next time.